and I think we're rolling. So, hi everybody. Welcome to episode 16 of the Hello Grace podcast. I am your host, Sarah Stevens. Thank you again for joining me. It's been sporadic as far as filming has gone. So, um, thank you for returning viewers if you've stuck around. Uh, I've been trying to figure out the best place to film so you have a pretty background. This is not the prettiest background. It's just my dining room slash living room. But um, I think by far it's the best lighting. So, we're going to go with it. And uh, just hopefully make it work. <clears throat> but I'm coming to you from Spokane, Washington. It's where I live and I work and I raise my family and I do all of the things crafty here. If you are a new viewer, um, I hope you enjoy this podcast. I, it's going to be a little bit of a recap about Vogue Knitting Live Seattle. I had so much fun. I can't wait to tell you all about it. I did finish two sweaters. Um, I'm finally done being super sick. I came home and I got the worst cold ever, 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 ever. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so... I guess jumping right in this morning, I am drinking massive amounts of coffee. It is I'm looking out my window and it is foggy and wet and cold. It's like the perfect fall day. There isn't any snow on the ground today in my little neighborhood. So um, it definitely still kind of feels like fall in that way. But I know that the snow is coming soon again but that's okay. I love the snow. Uh, on Friday, when uh, last Friday, right before we left to go to Vogue, um, knitting live in Seattle, it started, uh, it started snowing and it was just, it made me feel like I needed to listen to Christmas music and get my Christmas decorations up. And it's just, I love it. So, I uh, I, I was talking to my soon-to-be sister-in-law about this, and I don't think I could live anywhere where it was just hot all of the time. I, I'm such a Pacific Northwest girl. I love all of the seasons. Um, I don't truthfully mind the rain too much. I don't like when it rains constantly, um, but I don't really mind it, especially if I can sit inside uh, with a good cup of coffee or tea and my knitting. Uh, it's kind of perfect. Um, but I love all of the seasons. So I don't, she lives in, they live in Florida. So I just said, I, I, I like the snow. I do. So I don't know. <sighs> Everybody to each their own, right? Okay. So we're finally on episode 16. I've been doing this for a year and on my own now for a year. This is probably close to the 70th on cue, right on cue. Stella, get down. Stella, she's going to bark. She's totally going to bark. And this does not have a pause. Stella, come over here. Um, this is probably the 70th podcast that I've actually recorded, um, while only 16 of them on my own. And it's still, I look forward to it every single time I'm getting ready to film. And so I, I'm excited. I really hope this works out for the weekend, uh, mid morning in this location. Hopefully you guys don't mind my, my background too much. Um, so I can start recording on a more regular basis. The setup is not crazy here. And as long as my kids cooperate and my dog, it's truthfully my dog, <clears throat> we have this giant picture window in um, our dining room and that's where I'm at and she I feel like I'm shaking the camera I'm sorry you guys it's connected to the, the table <laughs> so I'm gonna try not to shake it too much um I'll move to the side anyways um she is a giant picture window up here and she likes to jump up and put her paws on the the windowsill and <clears throat> excuse me bark at <clears throat> everybody who's walking by, uh, which is super obnoxious, um, I'm sure, to 
everybody walking by to all of a sudden see this big black dog jump up in the window. But super obnoxious to me because she does it every time I start filming within the first couple minutes, it's inevitable. And when I was doing it on my phone or um, on the tiny little uh, tablet, even though the, I couldn't figure out how to make the, the screen the right direction, which is why I'm not using that anymore. Um, I could pause it when she did. And then when she'd go lay back down, I could, I could start again, but oh my gosh, I digress. This is a knitting <laughs> and pretty much fiber filled, um, podcast. Uh, today I'm going to have some finished objects. I have one, two, three, I have three works in progresses that I'm going to show. And I do have some planning. I do have some acquisitions from Vogue Knitting Live that I want to talk about. And um, I do want to briefly touch on some things that are happening with the shop and some things that I've learned uh, quite a bit about the shop. So my shop. So let's get started. Um, yeah, let's jump right in. This has been a really busy week. I really, um, I spent the entire time on the couch, um, sleeping or knitting and I actually tried to go back to work on Wednesday and they literally escorted me out the door and said, Nope, you, you can't come in today. You are still too sick. And I've never worked somewhere where they've done that before. So I was a little bit of like, it was a little bit in shock. And I even said to one of the gals, I said, uh, I feel like I I'm being escorted out. <laughs> and she's like, it's not a feeling you are. <laughs> Uh, so I died laughing, but because I got to spend so much time at home, I on the couch, either sleeping or knitting and catching up with some new Netflix series. And I watched so many movies, you guys, um, they're all kind of a blur because they just were one after another, um, most of the time in the background, but I finished my sweater. I had this wild dream, like the week before Vogue Knitting Live, I was like, I, I want to knit myself a sweater. I decided to go kind of late in the game. And so I wasn't anticipating having any sort of wardrobe. And I just said, I'm going to knit a sweater and get there. And it, no, it did not happen. I didn't think it was going to happen. I really pushed myself. I wanted to see if I could make it happen. And I couldn't, it didn't happen, but I did get it done this week and I got to wear it one night and then my daughter stole it yesterday and she wore it, which is kind of fun. It's like oversized on her, but it's very, um, there's a lot of positive ease for her and, and then there's a little bit of negative ease for me. So it worked. I, I might actually start knitting my sweaters that way so we can both wear them. Um, she's like at the perfect size, but anyways, here it is. I finished my Rock Creek sweater. It's a pullover and it is perfect. Oh my gosh, you guys. Look at that. I love like the raglan or the, the decreases right here. This sweater is knit top or bottom up. It's knit bottom up and the back is just a little bit longer than the, the front. I did not alternate skeins. You can totally tell but I don't care. Like, I still love it so much. I actually kind of like that there's this darker gray section um, down there. It is so soft. It is probably, for me, it's like the perfect fitting sweater. I, I absolutely love it. I did make some modifications. Um, the pattern is by Caitlin Hunter, um, who has swiftly become one of my new favorite designers and I got to meet her this weekend too. So I'm going to talk about that later too. Um, she's just like the sweetest person in the entire world. I mean, they all are like our knitting community has the best, the best people ever. I swear they're all so sweet and kind. And I made a total fool of myself. Um, I was just like in shock. I was like, Oh my gosh, all of my all like a huge handful of my favorite designers are like here in one specific spot. And it was like, I couldn't, I was stumbling over my words. And like, at some point, like I just had this cheesy grin on my face and I couldn't say anything. <laughs> so yeah, 
it was, <laughs> it was bad. It was very bad. Um, I was calling people the wrong names because it was like, I, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, um, but anyways, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, oh my gosh. My dad's car just got broken into and they took his garage door opener. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. Sorry. That was, uh, okay. I'm going to call him after that's done. Um, <clears throat> bring it all in. Okay. So I knit my sweater out of, um, Madeline Tosh farm twist. Here it is. Here's the, the label farm twist in the Merida colorway. It is 100% merino wool. It is a DK weight, 225 yards per 100 grams. Um, I I love this. I over purchased yarn. I feel like I always do that. Like I figure out the amount of yarn that I need, and then I never. I always end up buying more than I necessarily need. So. I think I purchased five skeins of it. I might have purchased six. I think six sounds a little bit better, but um, definitely got five skeins. And um, I have an entire skein and like three quarters left over. So amazing. Here we go. So amazing. I love this sweater oh so much. If you guys have not had a chance to knit one of her patterns, go run, go purchase them. You will not be disappointed. Um, they are like simple yet not like there's just so much detail added, but they're classic. I guess classic is the word that I'm looking for. They're classic timeless pieces that I think that you will um, get a lot of use out of. Uh, that's something that I have started really looking into is knitting myself and my kids things that are more timeless pieces. Uh, I do love the wild, crazy things too. Don't get me wrong, but I'm really going to start working on building our wardrobes um, in that way. So that is kind of my top priority right now. So that is um, probably one of my favorite things right now is that sweater. I'm going to update my project page. Oh, modifications I made. Sorry, I got, I got interrupted. My dad's car and uh, yeah, and when they still, they stole his garage door opener. So that's really scary. I don't even know if you can like dis connect that. You, you must be able to for these kind of reasons um, until you can get them out, like unplug it or something. Okay. Anyways, um, <clears throat> modifications I made. The only modifications that I made were on the yoke. Mm -hmm. um, it's meant, um, it's meant to be more open like this sweater is more open neck and I didn't want that this is more of a boat neck but it's more of a like a longer wide scoop neck and I didn't want that sweater to be that I knew that I wouldn't wear it as much um so I plus I, I knew that I my daughter was probably going to steal it a little bit so I wanted to make it so I just continued like the direction say to continue to decrease until you get the size that you want so I did I decrease until then turned out perfect so um, that was my fo number one fo number two it's still damp because it's been blocking is I finished my daughter's oatmeal pullover by Jane Richmond um, this will not fit me I did do it specifically to fit her it's long I made it tunic style um, I've just been having it hang to block I'm not I didn't like actually put it on the blocking mats it's just like hang like hanging on my little 
dry rack. But anyways, um, we did three quarter sleeves. And it's perfect. I cannot wait for her to try this on now that it's all done. Um, I think she's going to love it. She actually doesn't mind the green. I thought she would hate it, but she got it on um, when it only had like part of a sleeve done. She's like, Mom, I actually don't, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I actually kind of like the green. I was like, heck yeah, score. I love that. So um, this sweater is knit on bulky weight yarn that I dyed, I dyed 10 skeins of this yarn um, in like multiple small batches forever ago. Um, partially because I was trying to figure out like the perfect um, green color at one point in time and I knew that I would just alternate skeins and make a giant sweater for myself um, I don't know, three years ago and so I had all of this yarn and I never made myself a sweater and so I made her this well I'm left now with five skeins of bulky weight green yarn and I didn't use it all clearly so I don't know what I'm gonna do it's not quite enough yarn now to make a sweater for me but I do love the color. I might, I might make like a vest um, for myself, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So we'll see. Um, so that's kind of in the, I don't know, it's going to hibernate. Those schemes are just going to hang out for a little bit until, until then. But that sweater is knit raglan style. So it's knit from the top down. And I used... I think only one needle size smaller than the recommended needle size and it turned out perfect um, <clears throat> so that is my that's my only second finished object which is a lot you guys that's like tons uh, two sweaters I'm completely happy with even though I haven't podcasted in like five weeks but um, I I yeah I'm so happy about that Sorry, I'm distracted because my kids are popping into the kitchen and um, there's going to be some noise. So I'm sure they're going to try and be really quiet, though. OK, so the next thing that I started working on um, that I'm going to be picking back up again is I'm housing it in my rusted stitch bag. I love this bag. It's very big. It has arrows. It's this light pink and it's like a knitted outside. It's my Sunset Highway and I'm pulling this guy back out. I haven't worked on it in a while. I got sucked into the other sweaters and trying to work on them. But um, this weekend I am I'm pulling this back out and I'm going to finish the yoke and get working on the body. So this is what I have so far. I'm almost done. I guess that's the back. That's the back. Um, I'm really excited about the chance to get to wear this soon. This is a fingering weight sweater, also designed by Caitlin Hunter. Um, starting to see a trend here, I'm sure, pretty soon. And I'm knitting it at using um, Graceland wool yarn um, at the moment. And then the body, I'm going to be alternating skeins between um, some wool and boon, um, so ranunculus, and Graceland wool. Um, so that's going to be happening pretty soon. I'm really excited about that. And I can't wait to get that sweater done too. Uh, I think as soon as I get the yoke done, it's just going to kind of fly off the needles because it's kind of a no-brainer. You're just knitting, 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 knitting in the round, so it's very potato chippy. Um, but then I decided um, that I wanted to cast onto another sweater, so I did. Did I bring the pattern up here? No. Um, I started working on the Christmas in July sweater, and I can't, I thought I had the pattern up here. Um, but I don't. So I got this going. You can see the color work. I'm loving the way it's looking. Um, it's so dang cute so far. 
I am knitting this sweater for um, my middle kiddo, Caitlin. If you guys remember, I was talking about how she loved her little boxy so much um, that I wanted to knit another sweater for her. And so I had these, um, these packs of like mini skeins in my shop. Um, they're, they were called Boomsy Kitty. Um, and they're super cute. So it was seven colors and this pattern I think calls for like 11. So I'm using a few extra, um, mini skeins that are just hanging out in addition to those. But I am loving the way that it's turning out. Um, this bit, like this main color is um, Madeline Tosh Twist Light. I had two skeins of it. This is the Dust Weaver colorway. It's like this ivory and gray and palest peach and lavender. Um, that's really accurate right there. Colorway. <clears throat> and that's going to be the body of the sweater. And I originally had purchased this to make a different, like a shawl, um, back in 2016, January of 2016, actually almost a year ago. And it just it never happened. And then when I was thinking about her sweater and a good base, this was like perfect. It has some of the peaches and the pinks and then the purples in there. And um, I think it's going to be perfect. So I'm working on that. And I'm going to kind of let that one go for just a little bit until I can finish the yoke on my Sunset Highway. And then I'll pick that one back up again. Um, having two different color work charts going at the same time is a little bit in my brain like I get lost and so I I need to put one down and then finish one and then pick the other one up but then after after both of the yolks are done it's pretty much mindless the rest of the way down so I think they're both going to go relatively fast um I do have two more sweaters um planned and so I'm going to talk about that I did purchase yarn for those I kind of went to Vogue Knitting Live this last weekend with the intention of picking up uh, sweater quantities for two specific patterns and I was able to do that so um, that made me really happy I actually had three patterns in mind one of them I think I'm just going to dye the yarn for it myself but we'll see uh, the last thing that I cast onto was a pair of socks because when you're knitting in these little knitting circles, um, you just need something mindless to work on. And I brought with me a skein of, my camera's kind of not focusing. There we go. I brought with me a skein of Weasley Women. And I tested out this most beautiful Swift and ball winder there. And I don't know the name, like the brand, but the cake is just, I love how it wound that up. Gosh, my camera. Oh, well. Anyways, I love how it caked that up. It's just beautiful. So I cast on two pair of socks and with all of the chattering, I, I only got um, the cuff of one done. But I love how it's turning out. Um, yeah. This is going to become a... My whole Harry Potter collection is going to become a staple in, in the shop, I think. I love the way that they turned out so much. And they, I think, are very um, wearable, everyday wearable colorways. So they are just going to become everydays, which make me really happy. <laughs> I love dyeing them. And then, oh. There she is. Come here, Sal. I should probably, like I said, I can't pause, so I'm going to go let her out really, really quick. Okay, 
sorry, you guys. Um, if I didn't let her out, then she would have just kept working. <laughs> so anyways, uh, back to shop stuff. I, I think I'm going to keep them going and I'm probably going to dye up some more. Um, not this next update, but the following update, I do have some jewel tone fall colors, um, that are going to go up in the shop, which probably will make it up into the shop next week. So I'm really excited about those. Um, next time I podcast, I'll show those off. But, okay, so planning. So when I was at Vogue, um, I picked up a few, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I picked up three skeins. I, um, I purchased this pattern from Amy Swenson. It's um, a no finishing cardigan. Let's see. Let's see if I can get... This doesn't show anything. Um, if you can see a good picture of it. It has like this lace detail at the bottom and this lace detail at the cuff as well. And so I'm really, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I love her description. She says, I'm famous for not buying enough of a given yarn. Sometimes the shop only has a few skeins left and other times I'm hopelessly optimistic about how far the yardage will take me. And she designed this sweater to make the most of any any yarn that you choose. And so I picked up three skeins. Um, the size medium is the size that I'm going to knit. And I picked up three skeins of Magpie Solstice. I love these little tags. Um, here we go. Can you see how beautiful that is? Oh my gosh. And this is so accurate. This is like the best lighting ever, you guys. Okay, this makes me, I'm sold. This is just, this is where I'm podcasting from now on. <laughs> That's like the perfect, it's perfect, perfectly accurate um, as far as the lighting goes. So this is the Mesa colorway and the Solstice base is 50% domestic um, superwash merino. 25% silk and 25% domestic cotton. And there's 300 yards um, per skein. And it has the most beautiful, like, halo. I just, oh my gosh. I am, like, over the moon excited about this. It's going to be beautiful. So that that is happening I don't know if this will happen next, but I kind of feel like it might. Um, probably not when my Sunset Highway gets done with. Probably as soon as I make it through the yoke. I'm probably going to cast this on. Um, I'm so excited about this sweater. Once again, it's um, Every Last Yard by Amy Swenson. So I cannot wait to wear it. Um, here we go this. I'm going to just try and hold. You can kind of see the detail on the cuff. Yeah, it's perfect. It's so beautiful. So that is going to probably be my next cast on. Then the other sweater that I purchased yarn for is the Veronica. I am so excited about this. Like I stocked this booth, you guys, for like I made this I made the rounds like six times and stood in this in the Yoth booth uh for probably 15, 20 minutes each time, trying to decide what colorway I was going to buy. Um I ended up buying three four five skeins. <laughs> of daughter. Oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> I am so excited about this. Okay. So daughter, it's a DK weight yarn. It's 330 yards of a domestic rambouillet and merino blend. And I got the natural the natural chocolate color. So 
the sweater itself was originally designed out of this yarn and I understand why like <laughs> it's amazing absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to um, get this on my needles but I think this is going to be my like January 1st cast on I'm not even joking or like my Christmas Eve cast on oh my gosh too many sweaters, all those sweaters, but I can't wait to have it done. I think I'm going to live in that sweater, uh, which makes me super, super happy. Um, yeah. So, okay. I also, I also picked up, um, another skein. So I made it into the, um, the farmer's daughter fiber booth. And I knew that I wanted to pick up a skein of yarn for my Caitlin and I'm going to make her something out of this bulky weight skein. Um, I don't know if it's going to be mittens or what, but y'all, this is just beautiful. And look at this tag. I love their tag. Can you see that? Made in Montana. Squish bulky. It's hundred percent Merino superwash, 106 yarns. And this is the cone flower colorway. Um, it's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. I love it. I love it. It's like the perfect autumn, fall, um, orange, reds, pinks, grays. It's what I'm really drawn to right now. I think this is going to be for her. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a hat. I don't know if it's going to be mittens. I don't know yet. I don't know if it's going to be some sort of a color work sweater um, where this is the color work and like maybe I dye up some gray um, for the sweater or not. We'll see. But like a gray I think would be really pretty with it. So um, that was the purchase. I did purchase a candle from Waxen Wool, which if you've never purchased her candles before, they are beautiful. Uh, not only is, I wish I had brought it, but I didn't, um, the jar that it comes in, it's like this amber glass jar and it's just, it's beautiful. And the scent is out of this world. It, I purchased the pumpkin spice, um, scent. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And then I also got a necklace that um, I picked up for my oldest daughter. And it's just this circular, uh, circular, <laughs> it's a circle. <laughs> and um, it's on a gold, uh, it's like 14. Yeah, it's, it's a gold chain. And I picked that up in their booth as well, in the wax and wool booth. And so I she loves it. She wore it yesterday with the sweater that I knit. So I love that. Um, knitting group is texting me now. There's like all of these people texting me right when I go to record. So funny. Okay. So after I made my purchase of yarn, um, and actually if you purchased enough yarn, they gave you a bag from yarn on the house gave you a tote bag, which like, this is like now my new favorite tote bag. Um, I'm probably going to use this all of the time. Super excited about that. But inside the um, Yoth booth is where all of the designers like came together and I got to take this picture. I'm not going to insert one, but if you, cause I don't know how to, if you follow me on Instagram, then you saw me with this big cheesy grin in my book and all of these designers. And there was like Bristol Ivy and Shannon Cook and Caitlin Hunter and Jane Richmond. And anyways, they were all there. And a few of them were sweet enough to sign my book. And I had picked up the fourth edition of Making Magazine. And the reason why I picked up this one, like I, I don't own any of these and it's now going to be one that I get them all. I love, I love this book so much, but the very front, that is all rug hooking. And there's like a whole tutorial, uh, tutorial on how to do rug hooking. And my mom, uh, 
she, her and I talked a few years ago and I said, you need to find a hobby. And so she picked up rug hooking and it's been something that she's just been really perfecting over the last couple years. And she just recently opened up an Etsy shop. So if you um, do rug hooking or are interested in kits or anything like that, she does have some, I believe, in her shop. She is starting to teach classes. It's the Colorful Rug Hooker um, on Etsy. But there is a whole, like explanation on how to do rug hooking inside making magazine and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever so I love this book if you guys have not ever read or purchased making magazine it's so unique in the way that it um it's not just about knitting or crochet it's knitting and sewing embroidery crochet quilting cooking. Um, like I said, this one has rug hooking. Um, there's children's crafts in here. There's patterns. There's everything. And so it's just, and the pictures, the photography is just beautiful. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Go, um, some, Bristol Ivies. I cannot wait to make this. Um, I think it's absolutely beautiful and actually like I have this yarn and I was thinking it would be gorgeous. I just need to get some more. So I picked up this book, um, this magazine, which made me really happy as well. And then when I got home, my third edition volume number three of Rib Magazine came. And I was super excited because the sweet Amy Makes This Pattern is in here. Her sock pattern. Y'all go get this. That is so cool. I love that I know some of these uh, designers in here and have the opportunity to chat with them and truthfully look at some of these patterns. And you guys, I see this. I would knit that for me. I don't think it has to be just a men's sweater. Um, love it. So, okay, that, that happened. And then <clears throat> I realized that since I had just started knitting all of these garments and I'd never really been a garment knitter before, I was mainly an accessory knitter. Um, I'm starting to make that fill in the gap, I guess, um, between the two. And I'm enjoying garments so much. I realized I needed to put some tags. And the reason why is because my, my daughter, Caitlin, she's like, mom, I can't ever tell like which is the front and what is the back of my boxy sweater. And I, I chuckled the first time because I was like, that's so true. Like, you know, you can't. And I wanted to do something, um, that showed that like, however long this garment lasts and hopefully they last for a really long time. Um, that it shows that I made it. And so I purchased these tiny little tags and it just has my name on it. I didn't know what else to put. Like I didn't have anything fancy. <laughs> so I put my name, I had them do it in script in cursive. And I'm just going to be sewing these um, on the inside, on the inside of my sweaters like so. And I think it just makes it look so much more finished just to have this little tag. I keep moving it to the wrong side. That's more in the middle. There we go. Um, to have these little tags in here and I'm so excited about it. So I'm going to be spending some of my time this weekend getting this, these little tags sewn into my sweaters. Um, and then I'm just going to embroider um, like underneath the size, I think. I'm just going to um, stitch in like an, a small, medium, large, whatever size um, that I knit. So that way, I know, you know? And so if these get passed down, then they'll be able to see like this is a size medium. Okay. That's like everything 
I did purchase some church mouse um, yarn. I got some Isagar um, and some alpaca, some undyed, and then this perf like heathery mauve, mauve, mauve. I did get that too, um, which I have plans for. It's a lace weight, but I have plans um, for a design on that. So more to come later on that. Ha <laughs> Oh, I did have one more whip, you guys. I totally forgot about this. Let me show you this. Um, this is living in my suburban stitcher bag, my sweet little arrow bag. I'm kind of into these drawstring bags right now, you guys. Um, my other sock whip was living in this one. This is by um, Birch Grove. Here we are. And it's like this sweet little deer um, and these leather ties. I, it's like the perfect sock, sock size. Anyways, um, so in my Suburban Stitcher bag, I am knitting some socks that are just shorter leg socks, um, mostly because I do normally knit taller legs, and um, I don't have very many that are short legs, but this is out of Wool and Boon. I don't know the colorway, um, but it is beautiful, and they're just cuff down vanilla socks. I've already turned the heel, and I'm, I've already decreased, and now it's just knitting in the round, um, for the foot and I'm hoping to get these done relatively soon I am so cheesy like I I have spent like the last four months trying to pick the Birkenstocks that I want um, pick them out I have never in my life owned a pair of Birkenstocks I've always wanted a pair I have owned like nine million pairs of Doc Martens and I want a pair of Birkenstocks so badly and we bought my oldest daughter a pair of Birkenstocks for this year and she is like wearing all of my hand knit socks to school all of the time and I just I want my own pair like I want to be able to sport my hand knit socks in my Birkenstocks on the weekends um and so I've been trying to figure out exactly what pair I want and the more I look at it like I kind of just I want the same pair I bought her it's like the three little straps um, I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, um, I'm, I'm really kind of like picking up my hand knitting, um, hand knit socks game a little bit because I want to get some wear out of my hand knit socks, um, out in public. Normally I just wear them. I don't like to wear them with tennis shoes. First of all, I hate tennis shoes, but I don't want to wear them with like my clogs because I don't want the heel to get worn out too fast. That sounds so silly. I know it sounds so silly, but my clogs, like when I bought them, I did not buy them um, with the intention of wearing socks. I bought them um, so they perfectly fit my foot with no socks on, and so they're really tight. Um, oh my gosh, my hair is nuts. Um, so anyways, such a tangent. I'm on so many tangents right now. It's ridiculous. So these, these are happening. Um, and I'm getting those done probably in the next week or so. <sighs> Love it. Okay, shop news. So here's something that I learned. Um, anybody who purchased a Harry Potter club from me, and if there is a customs fee or whatever, um, it charged you for like all of the custom fees all at once because it generated the shipping label for um, the entire amount, and it wouldn't let me. It doesn't let you change it, or at least I couldn't figure out how to change it. So um, the next two shipments, will I'm just going to hand take down there, uh, so that way I don't have to charge you. Like, you've already paid for all of that all up front, so it's so ridiculous. So I figured out how to remedy that. Um, so if that is something that is concerning you, please get a hold of me um, so I can explain that and we can figure something out. Um, otherwise, from now on, I am going to be offering um, international 
club subscriptions um, in one month ones. Um, so that way I can print the shipping label for that month and it's not a problem. Not in a three month quantity um, for those international people. I'll do US ones and then international ones too. Just because I, guys, I just don't, um, ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. So anyways, I know I'm not making any sense, but it was really frustrating to me. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so the next update that's going to happen is probably going to be next weekend. And um, also um, this weekend, I spent the weekend dyeing up the uh, unicorn kits. So those are going to be going out um, probably on Tuesday. With it being so gross and rainy outside, it takes a long time to dry. So as soon as those... Um, I'm going to add a picture to the Instagram as well as soon as those are dry, not the Instagram, to the shop <laughs> and get those up there for you so you can see. And um, if you wanted to purchase them and you were waiting to see what they look like, then you'll have that option available. Um, in addition, all of the second November Harry Potter Club yarn is going to be going out probably um, the 20th or right around there. Um those are getting dyed up next weekend. I'm really excited about that. I've really been planning on that colorway. I'm trying my best to make sure that all of the colorways are different in some way. Um, so they don't have the same um, appearance, I guess. Um, if you liked the very first um, installment, I really think you did. It was one of my favorites. I can't wait to cast those on. I think that's going to be a pair of December socks for me. But in addition to that, the Little Women um, Club subscription is going to be going up in December. So watch out for that. I'm really excited about that. And also the uh, January, February, March Harry Potter Club subscription. Ow. Oops. <laughs> Head downstairs, guys. I'm almost done. Okay. Um, the January, February, March <laughs> subscriptions are going to... Um, and they're not going to be. They're already up and listed in the shop. So um, go check those out if you're interested. Um, that will be the last time that the Harry Potter subscriptions will be up and, until uh, next year, next October. Um, they'll just be on a rotation. So anyways, they're, I think, done being quiet. So I will let you guys go. Thank you so much for chatting with me. If you enjoyed this video, um, let me know. Have Give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm sorry. Hey, you guys. Too loud. Okay. I'm trying to finish up. Uh, oh, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. If um, this is something that um, you would like to subscribe to, that would be really, really great. Um, I'm going to be doing a drawing. So as soon as we get to 2,000 subscribers there, I'm going to be doing a drawing for that. Oh, prizes. Guys, I'm going to be sending out prizes. I've been so ridiculously slow on sending out prizes um it's it's been ridiculous so all of the prizes that you have won um are going to be getting sent out if you have not received your prize yet it's because not because it got lost in the mail um mostly because i have not had an opportunity to get it packaged up and stand in line at the post office yet so that will be happening uh this anyways all right i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week um i can't wait to chat with you again next week Hopefully, that's my game plan. Um, so until then, happy knitting, you guys. We'll see you soon.